Hey there, guys. Basil here, um, coming at you once again uh, with another Java tutorial. And you see here that I'm, I'm actually recording this while in the process of uploading tutorial number one. So uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right into tutorial number two here and uh, delete that. That's part of the tutorial. Uh, this is actually my second time trying to record this because uh, reasons that I don't really feel like indulging into. Indulging into? I don't know. I'm tired. Anyway, so... <laughs> This is actually um, the class Hello World that we did last time, but I didn't really feel like uh, starting a whole new project and a whole new class for this, so I'm like, whatever. Although, actually, now that I think about it, why be lazy? Let's just delete this class. We don't need it anymore. And yeah, whatever, 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 whatever. And then I can um, just create a new class. And I can call it Data Types, because that is what we're going to be go going over today. Um, is data types. Actually, the first thing I want to go over is uh, this. Uh, you see these this stuff in green. Um, this means nothing. Whenever you have two uh, forward slashes like that, it's actually creating a comment. So anything on this line is going to be a comment. So it really doesn't matter at all. It's only for your eyes and your eyes only. Oh, or the eyes of whoever's looking at your code. It's not going to affect the program at all. I was meant to mention that last time, but I didn't. Okay, so here we are in the uh, class data types and the main method, and we learned how to do that last time. So we're going to go ahead and get started in um, by learning about data types. In Java, there's really a few really basic principles that you need to learn. Uh, one of those is input and output, which is what we learned last time. Kind of, we learned about output last time. We learned about text output, the whole system dot out dot print line, whatever. Yeah, that's all um, output. That's the computer putting something. The program telling the computer to say something to whoever's running the program. Um, input we have not gone over, and I'm going to go over that in a later tutorial because. It's actually a bit more complicated than output, but basically that's the user inputting things into the computer and then it outputting things accordingly. And that's really the basis of programming. But at first we're, we had to learn about data types and variables because uh, they're really important for, I mean, without them you just have the computer saying a bunch of things. I mean, it's like n nothing's really happening. You have to have variables so that things can change, things can work. It's a lot of... A lot like math, if you think about algebra, I mean, you have a variable, and you can, you, depending on what value that variable is, you know, you could have different results. Okay, so the difference between um, variables in, in programming and variables in algebra, for example, is that you need to be able to classify your variable as a certain data type. So um, we have different data types. There's actually several that um, I kind of forgot because I don't really use them ever. I'm going to go over the ones that I use the most often that I think are going to be most useful to you. And maybe in a later tutorial, I'll go over the ones that I missed. But basically, you're going to have int, you're going to have double, maybe long, you're going to have char. Uh, you can also have things like string, boolean. Uh, that's it enough for now. Let's just go over what these are. Um, so, int. Int is just short for integer. So when you're saying int, you're basically creating a variable that is an integer. So whatever you create, the value has to be an integer. Now, when you do int, you'd put a space, and then you would put the name of your variable. So this doesn't have to be an integer, obviously. This would just be the name of your variable. Say my variable, or my integer. And you could really name this anything you want. You could name it um, Osama Bin Laden. No, you would probably wouldn't. Did I even spell that right? I'm retarded. Okay, so just let's just stick with my integer for now. Um, and then you could, you there's two things you could do. You could either end the statement right there um, by putting a semicolon. Remember that declarative statements are ended with semicolons. And then um, anytime later in your program, you could just say my integer. And since you've already declared that variable, um, it's gonna know what you're talking about, but you don't. You have to eventually give it a value though, because all variables need to be initialized. Um, you could also initialize it right when you declare it though. So you could say int my, um, my integer, and then set it equal to any integer you want. So an integer is of course a whole number. Um, well, a, a number that isn't a decimal. It could be negative or positive, and um, it could be twelve. It could be nine hundred. It could be negative uh, forty-five. It could be really anything um, like that. Let's leave it as five for now. 
so uh, that's basically I here I've created a variable called my integer and it is an integer variable and it has a value of five. Uh, double is kind of uh, now these are all have the, the different the thing about all these vari these data types is that they have a certain um, size in other words um, a size of a value that it can hold but really uh, you just need to know that double is if you want to create a decimal so I could say my double just naming my variable and I could say 5.25 and it would be able to do that for me now I couldn't do integer I couldn't say 5.25 it just wouldn't work because it has to be an integer see it actually yelled at me um, but don't think that you can't put 5 for double double can be decimal but if you put 5 it recognizes that that's 5.0 I mean you don't need to put like 5.000 I mean, it knows that five is the number that you're you're asking for, so it'll it'll work that way. Long, I never use long because long is really just a very very big double. I think um, I, I'm really not too knowledgeable about long. I think it's just when you're dealing with really big um values. Char is when you're actually you're not dealing with numbers anymore. You're creating, hold on, uh, just like a, uh, you're creating, uh, just a single character variable and it has to be a single character so you can say char my char and set it equal to a for example um, but you'd have to put in single quotations and say a so here you're setting ch oh wait a minute no something's wrong here wait what have I I don't really use char at all either so maybe I'm just being retarded do you just set it equal to a Oh wow, this is embarrassing. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing wrong here. In very uh, invalid variable, declaratorials. Declatoral <sighs> I'm actually quite embarrassed, guys. I don't know what I did wrong. Char should be a data type. Oh look, there it is. Wait. What? What? Ah. Uh? It lets me say char, but it won't let me uh, assign it a value. It won't even let me, okay, a equals a, maybe. Huh, that's kind of interesting. I am going to go uh, find out why it's doing that, and I'll get back to you later. Maybe I just, I don't really use char that much, so maybe I just forgot something. I'm doing something wrong. If you guys know, please go ahead and correct me. Uh, okay, let's move on though. I think this is getting a little too long. String. Uh, when you're creating a string, you're uh, gonna. It's basically you're saying that it's gonna be uh, words or a word, really. Um, so everything here, you know, you're dealing with numbers. You're dealing with characters, or at least you should be dealing with characters here. Um, do you need something's wrong? I don't know. I'll figure that out. Could it be possibly? No, I'm just retarded. Uh, Whoa, what? Seriously? It was the long that was ruining it? I knew I was doing it right. Okay, so... <laughs> back to the char, because now I know that I did it right. Um, You would say char, and you'd say my char. Sorry, that was just conflicting uh, variables right there. Uh, you say my char, and you set it equal to a single character using single quotations. Back to string. So string, I could name it my string, and then set it equal to a word. So, um, let's say hello. And there you go. It's like, what's up? I'm a string. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Holy crap. Oh, yeah, because it's considering this a variable. I, I, I'm, I'm retarded. Okay, so yeah, you need to have it in quotations uh, in order for it to know that it's a word. So characters, single quotations, strings would be in uh, double quotations. I'm, I'm just embarrassing myself. Boolean. All right, Boolean, I know. Booleans are really useful when you're um, dealing with, uh, what's it called? When you're dealing with, uh, loops because a boolean is pretty much just uh, yeah, a true or false statement so you can create your variable called my boolean and you can say it's true or you can say it is false there is nothing else you can do I am getting a call right now so I'll be right back alright guys I'm back and uh, once again I realize that this video is getting a little too long so I'm gonna go ahead and try to wrap up so yeah booleans are really useful for doing loops because basically you can set something that if boolean is true then it'll do something right the program will output some, a certain thing and then if you want it to not output that depending on what the user says you can make it so that when the user says something the boolean then becomes false and then if it's false it won't do it it's it, it, you'll see it's 
easier to understand practically, but for now, just know that a Boolean can be either true or false, and that it's actually, um, out of these, the ones that you'll probably use the most are probably int, blah, int, string, and Boolean. And this is my opinion. I don't know what kind of programs you make, but I think that's it. And uh, there are other data types that I didn't go over, but they're not really that important. And I'm going to go ahead and end the video now, so uh, thanks for watching, and watch out for tutorial number three. See ya.